Okay. Try the different poodle. Did you know that the fashion industry accounts for more carbon emissions than maritime shipping and international flights combined? Is the second largest water consumer and yet 85% of all textiles ends up in landfill each year. This video is about buying clothes responsibly. No other animal wears clothes and yet to us it's so influential, so spoken about, so sought after, so overconsumed and mass produced that we turn a blind eye to slavery, child labour, animal cruelty, the sheer mileage and water consumption, toxic materials and chemicals, mass waste. Is a piece of fabric this important? No. And I believe that it's manipulation from clothing companies that causes us to turn a blind eye. I believe that they play with fear of judgment and competition to such a great extent that trends are set. We would prefer to blend in than experience judgment. And with maintained manipulation, I believe that it's this same fear of judgment that encourages us to turn a blind eye to their filth. Trends have always been present in fashion, but social media certainly fuels it. You would think that maybe like competition would encourage people to be different, and yet somehow, because we're all comparing ourselves to others, just as magazines are plastered with celebrity outfit comparisons, house com comparisons, uh, shoes, you know, that we end up thinking that we should look or have the same thing as someone else rather than be ourselves. It's simply this race to buy the same clothing from the same chain stores with the same stock layout just feeding our consumerism on a plate. I can and do empathise, we can all fall victim to this, particularly when it is a manipulative cycle because everything is mass produced and marketed to make us feel that we should have that pair of shorts in that particular colour, not because we like it or it looks good on us, but because it looked good on a model and they advertise where we could get it with a discount code that gets them commissions. I think things used to be more natural and I don't think this has gone out of fashion. So let's see some choices that we can make to lessen our impact in such a destructive system. One, you don't have to wear what other people or what your friends are wearing, okay? Individuality and self-expression is amazing and the bonus is that you're discouraging mass production and judgment. And I know that that is easier said than done in a world where people can be bullied or harassed, but I am sensitive to that. The second thing is make things last. Buy things that represent you, not the wall of Primark, and then wear them for longer. Uh, just like vintage clothes, it's nice to have like that one jacket that everybody recognises you in a crowd in because it's your jacket. Thirdly, avoid greenwashing and femwashing. I'll attach a video to both. So it's basically steering clear of Primark, Zara, H&M, Sheen, Boohoo, or anyone owned by Boohoo. So that's Boohoo Man, Pretty Little Thing, Nasty Girl, I'm Not Saying Gal, Miss Pap, Oasis, Karen Millen, Warehouse and Coast. Basically the corruption and damage uh, within these companies is so atrocious, so unbelievable people turn a blind eye to it and so they discount it and just carry on shopping there. But it isn't just who we're buying from, it's also what, so it doesn't need to be new. And actually regardless you can get new stuff in charity shops, on eBay, Depop, Vinted, at Kilo sales, you can swap with family or friends, maybe someone's got the t-shirt that you've had your eye on for ages and that could be yours if you ask. Uh, you can rent clothes, so it's about keeping clothing going around in a circular process. We have enough clothes on this planet to dress every human for the next 100 years. And then we need to go ethical in terms of production location, conditions and material type. So in terms of location, we're trying to not fly it around the globe 100 times before it gets onto our legs, for instance. Uh, like a pair of jeans needs around 2,900 gallons of water and creates an equivalent of up to 80 kilograms of carbon emissions. It's the flying between the cotton, the buttons, the indigo to dye them with, where they're produced, where they're sewn, where they're then distributed to. So in terms of production conditions, if they've been accused of using sweatshops or selling things for a penny when they're not paying their staff or they have labels asking for help from garment workers or they're stealing independent uh, designers' ideas, let's just steer clear. In terms of material type, there's certain materials that we want to buy and certain ones that we don't want to buy. So there's a group that we want to be avoiding that release microplastics, that's polyamide, acrylic, nylon and polyester. And a cycle, washing them can release up to 700,000 microplastics per wash. And they're even finding microplastics in the placenta of unborn babies. So it's really important that we're starting to move away very quickly um, from using these plastics in our clothing. On top of that, polyester takes 70 million barrels of oil a year to make the fibres for producing the clothing and all of these four can take 200 years to break down. A couple of easy switches, so organic hemp and organic linen. 
There's this one, rayon or viscose, and it's kind of people think that it's good for the environment because it's made out of plants, but it's not, it's terrible for the environment. Instead, we could be using tensile lyocell or bamboo lyocell, which uses eucalyptus wood pulp and bamboo wood pulp. Uh, or there's PHAs, which are starting to be made into clothing. There's also modal, and that is made just like lyocell, but from beech trees. So then we have non-organic cotton and organic cotton. Non-organic cotton mm -mm, has pesticides, herbicides. It's very polluting for water and the atmosphere, and it has a huge water footprint. So instead we want organic cotton, which is not genetically modified. Uh, it has a lower water footprint and it doesn't have pesticides and herbicides, etc. In terms of leather, obviously it's an animal product, so it's gonna be coming in hand with animal cruelty. So instead, secondhand leather, but also alternative leather. So that's vegan alternatives. You can get it out of cactus, you can get it out of flowers, all sorts are coming out now. Similarly, you can get recycled polyester, but if you are doing that, just make sure it's not like 2% recycled. We want the whole shebang. We want 100% recycled polyester in that piece of clothing. And then there's Econil, which is made out of waste fishing nets. So it's still releasing microplastics each time it's washed. So it's good for things that aren't washed often. And there's also many other fabrics made out of bananas, made out of cactus, coffee, apple juice, sugarcane. I'll link to it in the description. Finally, in terms of looking at the label, you might see this sign on something. If it says standard 100, it just means it's chemically safe. But if it says made in green, that means it's actually been manufactured using environmentally friendly processes and under socially responsible conditions. But neither mean that it's organic. This is the label to check for organic fabrics. And finally, watch out for dyes. You want low water footprint and non-toxic dyes. I hope that video has helped anyone who didn't know that they were being a little unethical or who did but wanted to understand it better. And check out the other two videos on how to wash your clothes and what to do with them at the end of their life cycle.